Hello everyone, I'm going to share with you how to make picadillo. Now before we get started on our picadillo, I'm going to make us frijoles de la olla and that's basically beans in a pot. Now in the description box below, I'll have a link to my blog on how to also make Spanish rice and refried beans. So we're going to give our beans a head start in our pot before we start our picadillo and we're going to start our beans about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes before we start our other dish. I'm using pinto beans and I thoroughly washed them several times and I'm using four cups of pinto beans. Now to my pot, I'm also adding about a third of a white onion and I'm also adding one large garlic clove that I sliced into thirds. We're going to go on and raise our temperature on our water so that way our beans can start to boil. We're not going to add any seasoning or any salt or anything like that at this time. And the reason why you do not want to add it, uh, any salt to your boiling water is because it's going to make your beans very hard and tough and so it's going to take a long time for them to soften up. Let's check back on our beans. Our beans have been boiling for over an hour. They're looking good. They're starting to come along. The onions have started to get nice and soft. We're going to go on and put the top back on our beans and we're going to let those continue to boil till they're nice and tender. And we're going to go on and start on our main dish. So what we have here is I have the rest of my onion and we're going to be needing a half a cup of chopped white onion. And if you prefer a little bit more onion, you can definitely boost that up to one cup of chopped white onion. Now with picadillo, if you've ever had it before, it is Mexican beef and potatoes. It is so good. The meal is so versatile, y'all. And I'm going to give you some ideas and hints on what you can do with this wonderful, easy dish. Today we are having ours with the frijoles de la olla. We're also going to be having some nice light salad that I'm going to put because some of the kids, they want uh, burritos. My husband wants just like it on the plate with his tortillas and I'm going to make some flour tortillas as well. And so we're going to kind of uh, mix and match. It's going to be kind of like what different people in the family want to do with with their picadillo. Now as always in the description box below, I will have a list of all the ingredients that you need to make this delicious, yummy Mexican beef and potatoes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you how those ingredients come together to make this delicious meal for you and your family. And now what we're going to do is we're going to chop and dice up our tomato. I have two medium to large size Roma tomatoes and what you want to do is you want to cut your Roma tomatoes about the size, the chopped pieces you're going to use about the size of a dime, no larger than that. Likewise with our uh, white onion, I also chopped our white onion about the size of a dime. Now with your tomato, I'm using two uh, medium to large size Roma tomatoes, but if your tomatoes are on the small side, use three. You want to use three tomatoes if your tomatoes are kind of on the small side. If you are new to my channel, welcome in. And if you are a returner, welcome back. My name is Devon and this is my channel, Cooking for the Family. And on my channel, I share with you what I love to cook and bake for my family and my kitchen. I share cooking and baking tips and techniques that have been shared with me by the wonderful matriarchs in my family. It is my pleasure to share with you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I invite you to hit that subscribe button. For all those wonderful people who have subscribed, I thank you and I appreciate you so much. So next I have two medium sized russet potatoes that I have cleaned and peeled. And we're going to go on and also uh, do small bite sized pieces. And I like to chop these up about the size of say like a nickel, okay? And so once we have, and they're going to look like this, just like that. And you just need to, this is a very um, budget friendly meal because we're going to be using just a little bit of that onion that I have there. We're only needing two potatoes, two Roma um, tomatoes, our ground beef and our seasonings. And so it's really uh, pretty simplistic when it comes to the ingredients, but it comes out so good. So I'm checking on our beans. Our beans are looking really good. We're going to give them a stir and then we're also going to taste them to see how they are with their tenderness. And this is the point in which you know whether or not it's time for you to put your seasoning in. 
the beans have gotten nice and tender. They're at that nice point. We can go on and put in some salt. And I put in one teaspoon of table salt. Now with your beans, you wanna season them gradually because you don't want to over season your beans. You can always add, but you can't take away. So I just put one teaspoon. I put the top on fully this time and I go and I turn my pot to low. So now my beans are just on a nice simmer. So in my pot, I put two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Now to my pot, I'm going to be adding our onion, our nice chopped onion that we have, and we're going to saute our onion just until it's um, nice, it starts to get nice and tender, and your onions will become nice and translucent. Once you get to that point, then we're gonna go on and we're gonna add in our tomatoes. And this is what your onions should look like after they've been sauteed for a while. And now it's time for us to go on and add our chopped tomatoes. You want to add your chopped tomatoes as well as any juice that came off your tomatoes while you were chopping them. You want to also add that to the pot as well. We are going to mix and saute our onions and our tomatoes together. I have my flame on a medium heat right now. And we're going to cook our tomatoes and our onions until the tomatoes become nice and soft. They're releasing a lot of their juices. And also the sauce in the pot is going to thicken up. The onion and the tomato is gonna to thicken up a bit. And so you see, this is what you're gonna have. When your tomatoes are nice and soft, they've released juices. The pot, the onions and tomatoes have thickened up slightly. Now it's time for us to go on and add our ground beef. Now you can use ground beef or you can use also ground turkey. I've used ground turkey as well in the past. The traditionally though, um, ground beef is what you would want to use in this dish. And the ground beef that I'm using is a 85% to 15%. And that means that it's 85% um, meat to 15% fat ratio. And so that's the 85-15 that I'm using. And so once you have your ground beef in your pan, and my um, pan that I have, my um, pot, I have it on still that medium heat. And then what you wanna do is now, once you've mixed it in, we're gonna add our seasonings. And so first I'm gonna add some ground cumin. The ground cumin is gonna give it that, that nice little bit of smoky flavor. It is that background flavor that you find in a lot of Mexican food dishes. And we're gonna be using two teaspoons of the ground cumin. Next, we're gonna use some garlic powder. And you can use actually garlic powder, you can use fresh uh, garlic as well. Um, you can always use two cloves of chopped fresh garlic, but I like to use the garlic powder and it works really well in the recipe. And so I'm using one teaspoon of garlic powder. Next, we're gonna use some salt and I'm gonna put in one teaspoon of regular table salt. Now, as we go on, I am also going to taste it for more seasoning. And then next I'm using a half a teaspoon of black coarse pepper. Once I have my seasonings in my pot with the meat, I go in and I mix the seasonings around with the meat. Also, I'm using two pounds of ground beef. So that's two pounds that I'm using. I'll also have that information in the description box below, all the list of the ingredients. And this is gonna be enough for about six to eight people easily. It makes a good portion of the main dish of the picadillo. And this is gonna be so great because it makes wonderful leftovers. Next, once we get our meat to this point, we're gonna go on and start on our potatoes. So in my pot of the chopped potatoes, I put a little bit of salt and that was one teaspoon of salt that I put to the potatoes. We're gonna get the potatoes boiling. I'm gonna check on our meat. Our meat is coming along so good. It's looking really good, y'all. It's still not quite done yet. I still see a little bit of pink in there. We're just gonna go on and push everything down just like that. Give it some more time to cook. And I like to do this, of course, with the top off and just let it go on and finish cooking. Our meat has cooked for a little bit. Let me go on and taste it now for seasoning. Tasting good, we need just a little bit more. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt to our pot and then I'm gonna go on and add these potatoes in. So I'm adding our potatoes. Now our potatoes are not fully cooked. I parboiled them. And parboiling is that they're mostly cooked. They're still got a little bit of bite to them because we want the potatoes to finish cooking and the pot of the meat with the juices. And those potatoes are gonna start to soak up all those nice juices and spices that we have. Also to our pot at this time, you're gonna add one small can of diced green chilies and I'm using the mild green chilies that I'm adding now if you really like green chilies you can go on and boost that up to two um, small cans of the diced mild green chilies 
you want to mix everything around the potatoes the chilies everything get everything um, nice and mixed around and then that can that we had of the diced chilies I just put a little bit of water in that can and then I just kind of swoosh it around after I swoosh it around I get the rest of the essence of the green chilies out the can I go in and I add that to the pot as well just like that okay and then now what we're going to do is after we give it a nice stir we're going to go on and put the top on our pot we're going to turn our pot from a medium heat down to a low heat and we're going to let our meat simmer we're going to let our picadillo simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes okay the potatoes are going to finish cooking get nice and soft and then our beans, our beans are ready over there to the side. Our meat is looking so good, y'all. Oh my goodness. And what I was talking about, this meat is so versatile. It is so wonderful. This Mexican beef and potatoes, you can use this to make enchiladas, tacos, nachos, taco salads. It is so versatile. This is what we have right here. I have served us up some on some homemade flour tortillas. And in the description box below, I'll have the link to my video on how to make the best homemade flour tortillas. And on my tortilla, I have our beans of the olla that I made. I also have our wonderful picadillo. I also have the lettuce that I'm putting there right on top. I put some cheese as well. We're going to go on and put some salsa. I'm going to also dab it with some sour cream. If you have some fresh avocado or some guacamole, you can definitely add that as well if you'd like. And this is so great. You can make burritos with it, soft tacos. I think tomorrow we'll probably have some hard shell tacos. Remember I was telling you about those enchiladas. It makes really great enchiladas as well. The meat is so versatile. And also the recipe can be cut in half if you just want to make it for about three or four people as well. You can go on and just cut the recipe in half. But let's go on and give this a try we've got our potatoes our meat that first bite right there that's for you i'm gonna give it a try mm, wow y'all this never disappoints it is a budget-friendly hearty meal and it is so good but you know what we gotta do this is how we gotta do it we gotta go on and tear some of that wonderful homemade flour tortilla off and we're just gonna scoop up us right there you see how i'm doing it mm-hmm well, I hope you give this recipe a try. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Go on and hit that subscribe button. It's free. And if you like this video and appreciate the content, don't forget to show it some love. Give it a thumbs up and click share and share this video with a friend or family. And remember, it's always good when Devon is cooking for the family. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.